All right, and welcome to our three by three systems review. Now, in problem number one, it says just solve the following three by three system. Awesome. Okay, so remember, I've really kind of broken these problems down into level one, two, three, four, and look at this problem and just think to yourself, what kind of level is this problem? Well, if you called it a level three problem, you'd be totally right because what we can see is that there's actually a coefficient of one in front of the y. And so what that tells us is that when we would go to do our row labeling, row one, row two, row three, anytime I have a coefficient of one, I actually get to use that row twice whenever I'm doing my t-chart. So we'll draw our t-chart and we'll say, okay, the coefficient of one is in row two. So we're gonna do something times row two plus row one, and we're gonna do something times row two plus row three. So notice, once again, we get to use this row two in each column. Now, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna write out my row two and row one and my row two and row one. Okay, so now I see that I have my one Y right there and my one Y right there. So I wanna cancel out my Ys. And so the question I ask is, what will cancel out a positive three Y? Well, we know that it's gonna be a negative three Y. So the question then becomes, what can I multiply positive one by positive one times something will get me to negative three. And of course the answer is negative three. And so we're gonna multiply this row two by negative three and then add it to row one. <clears throat> so let's do our multiplication. Negative three times two x is in fact negative six x and negative three times one y is that negative three y that we wanted. Negative three times five z is negative 15 z and of course negative three times nine is negative 27. And then this actually allows me to add down. I can say negative 4x plus negative 6x is in fact negative 10x. My y's cancel and 4z minus 15z is negative 11z. And this is equal to, let's see, negative 14 and negative 27 must be negative 41. I'll double check that in the calculator in a second. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the other side of this. So here I see my positive one Y and I want to multiply it by something to cancel out this negative two Y. So what cancels out negative two Y? Well, that's going to be positive two Y. So one times what gets me to positive two? Well, of course, one times two. So we're going to multiply row two by two and let's go ahead and do that. Two times two X is four X. 2 times 1y is our positive 2y. Okay, check. We did this right. 2 times 5z is positive 10z. And of course, 2 times 9 is 18. Now let's go ahead and add straight down. My y is canceled. 5x plus 4x is in fact 9x. 2z plus 10z is 12z. And 21 plus 18 appears to be 39. Okay. All right, y'all. So the next thing that we want to do is we notice that in both cases here, I have two variables, so I can't solve any further. And here I have two variables. I can't solve any further. So what we're going to do is take these two, uh, two by these two, two variable equations, and we're actually going to write this as a two by two system. So let me pause this and we'll write this off to the side. Okay. And so you can tell that I wrote these two, two variable equations over here off to the side. Now these are pretty messy numbers. We're not gonna be able to multiply 10 by anything to get to nine. We're not gonna be able to, pull to multiply 11 by anything to get to 12 or vice versa. So what's our trick whenever we have messy numbers? Well, you can literally pick either variable to cancel. It doesn't matter. And what you're gonna do is multiply that variable by the other number. So notice I'm gonna cancel out my X's and right here I see this positive nine X. So I'm gonna multiply my top line by positive nine. And I tried to use the same color to show you that. Now, this bottom one, to cancel out my x's, I'm gonna multiply by this x right here. I'm gonna multiply by negative 10. But here's the problem. Nine times negative 10 is the same number as negative 10 times nine. But we want the opposite. So what we're gonna do is just change this from a negative to a positive. And now these things will cancel. Okay, so let's do this. Let's keep these things consistent with their original color. So I know that nine times negative 10 X will give me negative 
90x and 9 times negative 11z will be negative 99z and 9 times a negative 41 I'll have to use a calculator for that my guess is negative 369 but let's try so 9 times negative 41 is yeah negative 369 okay so negative 369 I should be like a math teacher or something and then down here in the red we have 10 times 9 well that's easy that's positive 90x and 10 times 12 which is positive 120 Z and positive 10 times 39 which is of course 390 remember whenever you multiply by 10 you just add a 0 to the end of whatever number easy okay here are my X's cancel <clears throat> and negative 99 plus 120 Z is actually gonna be 21 Z equals and let's go to our calculator and we can go ahead and do three uh, I'm sorry negative 369 plus 390 and we get positive 21 okay and that's kind of nice because when I divide both sides by 21 what I get is that Z is equal to 1 okay so now that I have my one variable this actually becomes pretty easy and I want to show you how to rationalize this in a way that's gonna make it very simple so pause the video finish taking your notes and just note that I'm gonna do this I'm gonna take this Z equals 1 in red I'm gonna take this negative 10 X minus 11 Z in green and <clears throat> I'm gonna choose any one of these rows it doesn't matter but I think this middle row row 2 is the easiest so here's equation 1 here's equation 2 and here is equation 3 and let me clean this up a little bit okay so I rewrote this but notice when I did what I said I would do when I wrote our original row 2 and I wrote this over here this uh, 2 by 2 system here in green and then I wrote my single variable z equals 1 you'll notice this is actually a level 1 problem from our 3 by 3 systems homework and this is pretty easy we know that we'll do this we'll take our two variable equation and we're gonna plug in this z equals 1 so I write negative 10 X minus 11 Z is equal to negative 41 where my Z value the 1 goes in place of Z and so from here I have negative 10 X I'm sorry y'all I actually want to keep these colors kind of consistent um, okay so we'll have negative 10 X and negative 11 times 1 is just negative 11 equals negative 41 and of course now we just solve for X I will add 11 to both sides that cancels and I have negative 10 X which equals here negative 30 we divide both sides by negative 10 and we'll get our second variable we now have X equals positive 3 and don't forget we had Z equaled positive 1 and at this point <clears throat> what we get to do is take this original row 2 we'll take our 2 we know what X is plus we don't know what y is plus 5 we know what z is is equal to 9 and let's go ahead and plug these things in z is 1 and our x value is 3 and from here we can solve for y 2 times 3 is 6 plus y 5 times 1 is 5 this is equal to 9 and I know that 6 plus 5 will give me plus 11 and all I have to do <coughs> is subtract 11 from both sides and at this point we get our y value y equals oh negative 2 I'll write that right there y equals negative 2 and from here we can actually just go ahead and write our final solution so pause the video and you know take your notes and then let's just go ahead and write out our final solution it's gonna be 3 comma negative 2 comma 1 and there we go alright y'all let's go ahead and move on to our second problem okay in problem two it says create the three by three system that best models the following scenario so this will be nice and easy because we just get to make the system we don't really have to worry about solving it so a movie theater is filled to its capacity of 350 people okay so let's just go ahead and start there let's write 350 and this is our total number of people now when we say people <clears throat> we're going to ask like well what kind of people and it looks like we're going to have uh, students is one label, children is another label, 
and adults. So let's go ahead and write those with variables that represent them. Let's use C for children, S for students, and A for adults. Now, the next thing that catches my eye is it says it's $4.50 uh, for children. So let's go ahead and create our value equation. 450C plus, I noticed that 750 for students, so 750S plus 1250 for adults. And what is that going to equal? Well, that has to, since we have $4.50, $7.50, and $12.50, we want this to equal something that has dollars. And so our total value amount will be $24.15. Now, I don't like that I'm writing this um, crooked, so give me one second. Okay, so now that we've written this a little bit nicer and neater, the next thing we want to look for is our proportion equation. So it says that there are half as many adults adults as there are students. Half as many adults as there are students. And I want you to remember this rule. Whenever we're talking about our proportion equation, we always put the multiplier, in this case half, we always put it with the second label. So it goes adults and then students. So one half s is equal to a. And there you go. Nice and easy. Let's move on to our third example. Okay. For our third example, this is actually going to be problem four, and it says this will be on the test, this question exactly, and I am not lying to you. Now, I'm not going to work out this question fully, but what I am going to do is show you how to set it up. So looking at this equation or this uh, system, ask yourself, what seems to be the, what, what's wrong with it? And if you notice that here in row two, and here in row three, that our x, y, and z are not by themselves on the same side. And that actually uh, is a little bit of a problem. So <clears throat> what we wanna do in order to solve this problem is we first have to set everything in order. So let's take our row one, and we know that it's already fine. So I'm gonna rewrite row one. Negative four x plus five y plus six z is equal to seven. And over here, let's go ahead and take row two we have this negative 3y is equal to negative 4x, let's see, minus 4z uh, plus 5. And our goal is we want to get the constant by itself. Well, what gets rid of a negative 4x? Well, we can write positive 4x. Now let's write plus 4x to the left side. So this gives us 4x minus 3y. Notice I'm still keeping x and then y is equal to negative 4z plus 5. And from here, well, what gets rid of a negative 4z? positive 4z. So we can do plus 4z and plus 4z. And now we get this, 4x minus 3y plus 4z is equal to 5. So let's go ahead and write that out. 4x minus 3y plus 4z is equal to 5. Okay, so we've fixed our row 2. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our row 3. 4x plus y is equal to 2 plus 3z. And the only thing that we need to move away from our constant is this 3z. Well, what's the opposite of plus 3z? Minus 3z. So let's go ahead and subtract that. Now we have 4x plus y minus 3z is equal to 2. And notice I have to keep the order the same. x, y, z. Okay, so now we have 4x plus y minus 3z is equal to 2. And notice here, this will actually be a pretty easy problem because this negative 4x can cancel out that 4x and this negative 4x can cancel out that 4x. So if I was going to give you any sort of hint to continue this, I would do row 1 plus row 2 and I would do row 1 plus row 3 and I'll let you all solve that from there. Thank you all.